Sound design. Yeah. All right, so we're continuing our work doing the crossover alignment on these two speakers that Bryce sent me. And the next thing I want to look at is should you avoid putting filters around the crossover region? And should you avoid filters at all? At some point in your life, you've probably heard someone say that EQ filters are bad because they create phase shift. So let's look at that a little bit. So um, you see here that, you know, we have this kind of, in the last video, I talked about how there's this natural roll off here, this kind of response. So just taking a look here, this is kind of the target I'm going to follow when I'm inserting these filters, in case you're wondering um, what I'm doing here. But just taking a look at the filters, I'm gonna put a filter right here to try and take care of this guy, right? So I insert that filter and I'm happy with the response. And so you might be wondering, well, isn't this a problem if you're going to have a crossover region somewhere in here? And isn't this a problem if you're creating phase shift? So let's take a look at the phase. Let's look at magnitude and phase together. And I'm going to adjust this a little bit so that we can see the phase. There we go. And I'm gonna take this filter out. And I guess what I want you to look at is this line here. So I can't, I'm not gonna, it's not gonna be an exact straight line, but imagine that, you know, this response wants to do something like this, but you can see here that it has kind of these weird wiggles. Like there's this weird wiggle here and here and here, and you know, these correspond with whatever's happening here, right? So we look at these and we see like, oh, there's a disturbance in the magnitude and there's also a disturbance in the phase. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. There is a great disturbance in the force. But you'll see that when I insert this filter, watch this area here and this area in the phase, that the phase gets better, okay? There's not such, a, such this big curve here. And when I insert the filter, it flattens out a little bit. So I'm actually making, I'm actually equalizing the phase at the same time that I'm equalizing the magnitude. It's all the same sound. We're just looking at two different aspects of it. So I'll go ahead and insert the other filter. So watch this area down here. Okay, you see that flatten out a little bit as well. And then I'll insert the last filter, which is gonna be for this peak here. Okay, and I know that you don't know anything about these speakers and I don't really either. Um, but you can still see that this phase response is a lot um, more smooth now and seems to make a lot more sense now that I've also sort of smoothed out the magnitude. And the last thing we'll look at is adding the group delay. So I'm going to bypass all of these filters again and take a look at this big jump. Like we don't love this, right? We would love it if the uh, group delay, like everything else, could either stay the same or kind of like have the same like slope down this way. But you know, these areas where uh, we've got like this, it goes like boom and then boom and then boom. You'll see that those get kind of equalized as well. So look at this big peak here. And then I insert the filter and it's better, okay? The group delay has improved. It's not jumping around so much. I'm gonna insert the second filter you see another improvement in the group delay and same thing down here. EQ filters are not bad. When you are equalizing the magnitude, you're also equalizing the phase. And this is true as long as, you know, typically you're looking at direct sound, right? This is not true if you're looking at something like a comb filter where you have this uh, disconnection of the magnitude and phase, right? So if you're trying to EQ a comb filter, then you're not going to see the same kind of improvements. Um, but these measurements were taken outside um, with out reflections or with very few reflections. And so we're, we can be pretty certain that we're looking at direct sound, um, not just because I've seen a photo of the setup and because Bryce told me that's how he did it, but also because I see this connection. When I insert filters, I see a change in the phase and the group delay. And so I know that I'm sort of headed in the right direction. And then it's also, I think it's also totally fine to insert filters around the crossover region because you, as you can see, it's not making a huge change to the phase, right? So I'm putting in a pretty big filter here, minus 7.6 dB, and you see like a minor change to the phase here. So it's not like throwing it all out, out of whack and like going crazy. So 
it has been really helpful for me to just sort of look at some of these changes myself um, so that I'm not too influenced by just hearing um, myths about EQ and things like that. So I would invite you to do the same thing, you know, open up your audio analyzer or some sort of environment where you can play around with these filters and see how things really change when you insert a filter and see um, what the changes to the magnitude, the phase, and also the group delay. Okay, I hope that was helpful for you, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Sound design. Yeah.